Greetings, everyone! Welcome to Part 11 of the Sonic and Mega Man Worlds Unite crossover! Before I get started, I should make one major correction. Remember when I said that Breath of Fire 3 was considered one of Ian Flynn's favorite games? Turns out, I was mistaken. The guys never touched a Breath of Fire game, and the reason the third game is in the crossover is because Capcom told them to focus on that one. I take full responsibility for this misinformation. Anyway, the past two parts had the United Army go to different worlds to recruit the locals to help fight Sigma, and they pretty much succeeded. Also, Sigma destroyed Sky Patrol, but everyone on board escaped with the Chaos Emeralds. Everyone will then rendezvous on the skies of Arcadia airship for the final battle. We begin with everyone on board the Delphinus, and Sonic's giving a speech to Sigma, which can be summed up as, You screwed with the wrong world, Sigma! Now pay the price! Then we get a two-page spread of everyone on the offensive. Man, we've been getting a lot of these throughout this crossover. And geez, the Delphinus' Moonstone Cannon took out a good portion of Sigma's face. Well, it is the most powerful weapon in the skies of Arcadia Universe. Now, I do like how the heroes have each other's backs, like the Celestial Breast protecting the Billy Hatcher crew, and the forces of Shadaloo aiding Street Fighter Ryu's group. Meanwhile... Oh, hey, remember these guys? Yeah. Eggman, Wily, and Xander are sneaking around Sigma's base. Eggman points out a valid concern. Why are he and Eggman teaming up with an anti-technology zealot? Xander responds it's his destiny, but he doesn't like it. As Eggman and Wily discuss what they can do with the Master Engine, it's revealed that Xander has an ulterior motive. Back to the battle. We see more characters messing up Sigma. Also, it seems Sigma had the larger mechanoids on reserve after all. Not only that, Sigma's been busy making an army of knockoffs, and not to mention there are turrets in the area as well. Um, Styx, give Sir Arthur his gear back, please. So yeah, that's pretty much the rest of this part. Fighting, and fighting, and more fighting. Eventually, the robots start losing power due to the heroes finally stopping Giant Sigma. While everyone celebrates, Styx points out that they've only stopped some of the Mavericks and figures Sigma's still gaining power from other worlds. To be fair to Styx, we haven't seen any Mavericks in this issue. Sure enough, from the remains of Giant Sigma comes his third form. So yeah, Sigma pulled a Frieza. Smaller body, more power. He begins his assault by taking out Gore Magala and Panzer Dragoon. He walks off Amy's brush like it was nothing before taking out the Sun Goddess herself, and the combined attacks of Vice and Breath of Fire Ryu does absolutely squat. Time for the Chaos Emerald Trump Card. Because Mega Man doesn't remember using the Emeralds, Sonic gives him a crash course on how they work. Sigma continues smacking heroes around, and is holding X and Sally by the neck. Okay, I should point this out that X went with Sonic and Mega Man to the Chaos Emeralds, and on a panel on the same page, he is at Sigma's mercy. There's actually a story behind this, but I'll save it for the comments section. So Sigma gives his Do You Think You Can Stop Me spiel. Then right on cue, enters Super Sonic and Super Armored Mega Man ready to take him down. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the summary being short. I mean, how can you summarize an issue which is mostly fight scenes? It gets boring fast. I could note how awesome this is that these video game characters team up to take down Sigma, but again, it's most of this part. To be fair, a lot of the crossover consisted of fight scenes, and I managed to summarize those pretty well, but then of course those fight scenes had some banter among the group. Perhaps it would have been nice to have here? Now honestly folks, I was a little surprised that Sigma had a third form. A little. Now is this a new body, or is this his first body after a major upgrade? If the latter, then this panel back in Part 7 makes sense. Styx pointing out that Sigma's still gaining power makes sense because, while we saw a good amount of Mavericks getting trashed, many others were unaccounted for. Fans of these game characters might not be happy that Sigma's tossing them around like ragdolls, but at the end, it's a Sonic and Mega Man crossover, so we have to have these two power up to fight him. On that note, there is Mega Man's form. It doesn't make sense here. You see, in the first crossover, Mega Man's all bulky because he uses the Rush Super Adapter before absorbing the Chaos Energy. 
And at the time, we were dealing with a post-Mega Man 10 Mega Man. Here, we have a Mega Man that's just finished the events of the third game. So, the Super Adapter doesn't make sense from an in-universe perspective. Unless you chalk it up to Chaos Emeralds. Now, about X accompanying Sonic and Mega Man to the Chaos Emeralds. Well, there was an original plan to have X become Super as well, with him gaining his Force Armor from X4 and X5. Somehow. But the higher-ups shot that idea down, probably because of equal representation on who goes super in the crossover. And in retrospect, executive meddling might be the reason we see Mega Man in his super adapter form way before he should. Anyway, I think the artist used Ian's draft before the changes were made, which would explain why X is suddenly at Sigma's mercy. In-universe, he might have bought him some time? So M. Bison's brought along a couple of other fighters, Balrog the Boxer and the Masked Warrior Vega. For those who have only seen the Jean-Claude Van Damme Raul Julia Street Fighter movie, I should point out that Balrog is affiliated with M. Bison in the game. Speaking of villains, we have only one page of Eggman, Wily, and Xander. It's definitely setting up something we'll probably see next part, but it would have been nice to see them at least one more time perhaps during these several pages of fighting. Man, these guys were underutilized in this crossover. Granted, Eggman and Wily were the villains of the last crossover, but still, like to see more of these guys. I was going back and forth between two scores, but ultimately, I'm giving it a 7. Despite the issue mostly being fight scenes and underutilizing characters, the art's great, and there are some nice visual gags like the two Ryus here, and the panel featuring Styx and Ika. Still, would have liked to see more of these three to break up the fight scenes. Now, I should point out that this part is also a milestone for the main Sonic comic. Issue 275. Like Mega Man 50, it's a double-length issue. Unlike Mega Man 50, the second story is a reprint. The story comes from the free comic book day issue released earlier this year. Said story points out the origins of the Genesis portals and Silver the Hedgehog's role in closing them. The reason I'm not talking about it here is because I've already reviewed the story. Check out the link below to see it. Anyway, next time, it's the final part of Worlds Unite. Can Super Sonic and Super Mega Man stop Sigma? What does Xander have planned? And how will the proverbial reset button be pressed near the end, if there's a reset button at all? Until then, have a good day, and be safe. So the feline hunters are here too. Wonder what Sonic and Mega Man thought of their appearance.